Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU merges milk and fruit school scheme to combat child obesity and European Union exit could result in job losses, says Lord Mayor. EU-wide corruption report drops chapter on EU institutions and European Union pledges 45 million euros to Central Africa. Plus, European Central Bank annual report for 2012. The storms continue and forecasts of a month's rain in the next few days. Perhaps you're wondering what's going on. Well, take a look at Suspicious Observers channel on YouTube. That's the number zero as the O in Observers for daily updates on solar system-wide weather, how and why it affects our climate. It's Wednesday, the 12th of February. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. EU merges milk and fruit school scheme to combat child obesity. To promote healthier lifestyles and combat obesity among school children, the European Commission has proposed to bring two separate EU schemes on milk and fruit together under a joint framework. The aim is to address poor nutrition more effectively, to reinforce the educational elements of the programmes and to contribute to the fight against obesity, as the consumption of these products have been declining among young people. Now, this is a positive step in the right direction, but I seem to remember that I had a milk programme when I went to infant school. I wonder what ever happened to that. Something about Margaret Thatcher milk snatcher. However, I can tell you this is needed. Walking back from school two weeks ago, I came across a young mother and her brood of five little people that's wandering up to the school at about 9.10 in the morning. More to the point, they were each eating hot dogs, KP skips and Haribos the official breakfast of the 21st century. EU exit could result in job losses, says Lord Mayor. Scotland's role in Europe has been thrown under the spotlight following a warning by the Lord Mayor of the City of London that a vote to withdraw from the European Union in a referendum would threaten financial services jobs across the UK. Alderman Fiona Wolfe told Scotland on Sunday that EU membership had become a big issue for businesses. I'm forever asked what business and the city think about EU membership and the uncertainty that surrounds the outcome of a potential EU referendum. Both the city and the CBI have taken the pulse and roughly 80% of firms say they would be worse off if we did leave the EU. Now, we worry that many of the businesses in the city are there because they see it as being a gateway to Europe. If a referendum forced us out of the EU, they might not close their city offices, but they might do more business through Paris and Frankfurt. Aha! Well, as we were reliably informed in our letters section, the City of London financial sector is up for the chop anyway, because of the legislation that hands FSA powers over to Frankfurt and Paris. That is already on the table, and given Barroso's latest EU update, where he talks about the foundation stones for a fiscal union, it's not that far down the road. Now, it's all well and good, these hoity-toities rocking on about the views of the banks to corporate globalists in Canary Wharf. But what about the people of Britain? Don't the Lord Mayor's politicians and members of Parliament have a responsibility to the people first? <music> EU-wide corruption report drops chapter on EU institutions. The European Commission has decided not to include a chapter on EU institutions in a report on corruption. The original plan, announced in 2011, was to assess corruption across the member states and within the EU institutions. EU Home Affairs Commissioner Cecilia Malmström released the first biannual report on Monday the 3rd of February, around six months later than originally planned. Now, Malmstrom's spokesperson, Michael Sircone, told this website in an email that the Commission had considered assessing the anti-corruption efforts of the EU's own institutions, but realised that this is something we will have to come back to in a future EU anti-corruption report to be sure that the evaluation would be satisfactory and objective. 
He noted that it would be difficult to provide an objective self-evaluation because, unlike for member states, there are no independent external reviews the Commission could draw on to evaluate its own institutions. Perhaps that's why they can't get the auditors to sign off the EU accounts. This is a shambles. Can you imagine a large multinational company saying to Companies House and HM Revenues, well, we're not sure how much we made. We couldn't audit our accounts. There was no one independent we could rely on, and so we're not paying. Ah, hang on a minute. There might be a couple of cases like that, actually. Um, Vodafone, Starbucks. Ah, turns out there's actually rather a lot. Of course, it could be because there are different rules for those that have nots and those that have yachts. EU pledges €45 million Euros to Central Africa. The European Union pledged €45 million Euros in fresh funding for the conflict-wracked Central African Republic on Friday, EU officials said. We are mobilising all available resources, not just development aid to help the people of the Central African Republic and improve their security, said EU Commissioner for Development Andris Pybalgs. Now, the EU has already committed around €150 million Euros to the crisis and this month approved a 500-strong force to be deployed in CAR alongside some 700 African and French troops. The new funding will support the African Union-led mission in CAR and also back elections set to take place by the end of the year. Now, just over half of the fresh funding promised, €25 million, Euros, will go to the military force, with the remainder earmarked for political processes. Now, there's a lot of activity going on in Central Africa, and plenty of EU investment. Now, our information tells us that this doesn't take place without there being some strategic, economic or geopolitical moves afoot. Maybe our viewers, readers and members of our community can furnish us with some extra information. Go on, write in and tell us what you think's going on. A plethora of new reports coming in from our research team into the unit. And right now there is plenty to look at in our legislation section. Now, this annual report from the European Central Bank gives a backdrop to the shaky ground the European project is standing on. Here are a couple of excerpts. Monetary policy. Although the report welcomes the efforts of the ECB in 2012 in its contribution to stabilising the banking sector and helping to sever the link between the banks and the nation state, there is still great concern over the weak economic conditions within the Eurozone. The fear is that if these remain persistent, political support for the European concept will be threatened. On banking union, given the banking system's fragility, structural reforms are needed. The progress achieved on the single supervisory mechanism is welcomed as it should contribute to restoring confidence in the banking sector and to reviving interbank lending and cross-border credit flows. It is suggested that the ECB should consider involving non-Eurozone member states such as the UK in the single supervisory mechanism to ensure a greater harmonisation of supervisory practices within the EU. <laughs> Is that a statement of intent to integrate the Bank of England, the first tentative steps to fulfilling our obligation under the Lisbon Treaty to join the Euro? Additionally, the report says the Troika should be replaced by a system consisting of the Commission, answerable to the Parliament. Hmm, I think we've all seen how that works. Check out our video library for film of the EU Parliament in action. Yes, that's a single word, in action. With the decision process including the Eurogroup, the ECB and the IMF. I was looking through our video library section today for a daily recommendation and I began to realise just what a vast body of information we've built up. Now I highly commend to you spending an hour rifling through the videos with a mug of coffee in hand. However, that is not what got my interest. I keep getting drawn back to a video of Lord James of Blackheath talking about a massive interbank fraud. Well, I happened upon that video again this morning and thought, hmm, I would take a look. Well, well, what do you know? It's gone missing. Now, I don't know about you, but I start to smell a rat when evidence vanishes, no matter what the reason. And to cite some multiple copyright violations for an unbranded piece of video footage shot in the Lord's chamber of our own parliament is stretching it a bit. Somebody doesn't want us looking into this. 
Well, the beauty of the internet is that once it's out there, it stays out there, copied and mirrored around the globe. Efforts to find a new copy revealed a more in-depth video of Lord James. At some 26 minutes in length, this video takes you through the whole sorry tale. In the background, here at the unit, we are hoping to look more deeply into this, as we have a few good ideas as to what's actually taking place. So, watch this space. In other news, the gremlins are back in the machines again. Sadly, they have managed to tear the wiring out of the back of our on-the-spot feature. Now, it's only fair to say that we had a really good response from the wider MP and MEP community in response to our message, but the circuits got fried in the process. In consultation with the rest of the team, we have decided to suspend the feature temporarily whilst we go on a gremlin hunt and bug squish. But a big thank you to all of you who responded. Now remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Or join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.